So last time I saw you, you were getting a massive honor, UFC Hall of Fame. You had your husband Travis by your side. What was that night like for you? I don't know. I guess it was really kind of surreal in a way. A lot of those nights, it's more like I just want to do a good job and then I can like appreciate it afterward. It was just really, really cool seeing everybody again. It was a moment for me to talk to the people that I don't have the, the opportunity to speak to personally. Because of you, I am the first woman standing up here accepting this incredible honor. Together, we have redefined what it means to be strong, to be sexy. We changed what it means to fight like a girl. Dana is like a, I want to say like a proud parent almost. Like he is just so proud of everything you do. I mean, the fact that we're chatting here today is because of Dana White. What's your relationship with him like now that you have so many other things on the horizon? Dana's always gonna be one of my best friends. Like I love him so much and like, I will never ever forget that he believed in me when nobody else did. And his belief changed my life. And we have like a lot of history, but he's also somebody who I feel like I can relate to a lot and understands my viewpoint a lot. And I can really kind of like vent to him and get his point of view on things that like a lot of people wouldn't understand the kind of situations I'm in. So for sure. I, I get just excited for like his little successes as he does for mine. So he's like just been a great friend, not just a boss, you know? And I think that as we've transitioned from that like boss to employee relationship to, you know, afterward, it's just gone to prove that, you know, we were bonded together by something more than just the UFC. Um, you changed your own life, but you've changed the face of a sport. Do you allow yourself to think about that? Yeah, I guess I've had a lot more time for like, you know, self-reflection and things like, like that. I want my, my legacy to be like, I was a force of good and like mankind was better off because I fucking existed, you know? I don't need people to know that. I just need to have that effect. And I don't know, I, I think that's the most rewarding thing for me. And I think it's kind of fun sometimes when like, you, you see things that you don't get credit for, but it's, it's happening and it makes you like so happy. Like I remember I was driving past some shopping center and I saw a Victoria's Secret model like, in like a sports bra and covered in sweat and with her hands wrapped. And I was like, I fucking did that! Like, and I was like, she's, she's sweating! Yes. She's that, like, that's a Victoria's Secret model and she's athletic gear and sweating and hand wraps, you know? And like, I don't need anybody else like jumping to the mountaintops and being like, oh, you have changed culture so much. I also don't need to censor myself and worry about other people like hating on me, giving myself some credit. Like, fuck you guys, I'm fucking proud of myself. I did some awesome shit. And um, I, I really enjoy the effect that I've had, and I can't wait to see my daughters enjoying that effect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got women headlining pay-per-view in Brazil. I mean, that is because of you. It's super important. But something that you've always had with you, and I think you'll always continue to have with you, is like your judo background. I mean, it was your mom's, it is yours. Do you still practice judo? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely say yes. Okay. No. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. I remember when I was a kid and I would see these people like their 40s and 50s, like still on the mat working out. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna like tear my knee out. Are you kidding me? I like, do like the littlest bit of judo and I'm like, this shit is dangerous, okay? I'm going to like <laughs> rip out a joint at any second. Do you watch any MMA, judo, wrestling, even like when you're not participating? Judo, the change in the rules. Um, just frustrates me so much that I can't watch it and I want to punch a screen. Um, MMA, I just I just know and love so many people that it's like really personal to me every time and I don't like seeing my friends getting in fights. So it's like, I just want to relax, man. I just got home, like, uh, yeah. you know, just let me know how it went. I hope it goes well kind of a thing. It's really too stressful for me to watch because I'm like really emotionally attached, do you understand? Yes. But with WWE, I, for some reason, it's like I, I have to keep up. And I need to know what's going on. And I'm like, when everybody's like, when I finally have my time with the TV, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go in the room and I'm gonna go watch the Ron SmackDown. When I'm actually at the event, I'm usually so like focused on what I'm doing. I sure. don't really get to watch the rest of the show. So it's like, I don't know. I like, I just miss them so much. And I like, I love watching wrestling. Like yeah. that's like all I spend my time doing at home is I watch like wrestling and like anything na narrated by David Attenborough. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. It's a good mix. <laughs> yeah, you know? I was just gonna say, that's it. Okay. We'll go with it. It's Renee Young and David Attenborough. <laughs> All these are the two voices I want in my head. I love that. Um, like, with wrestling, we always knew that you were such a big fan. Like, that was never a secret. You always talked about that was, you know, a big love for you as a kid. When you actually got over there, did you expect to love it that much? 
No. No, not at all. We were planning on having a kid, and I was like, okay, what do we, like, what's the bucket list of things we need to like do before we start trying to have a kid? And I was like, you know what? I always thought I would have been able to do something cool at the WWE. I mean, I don't have much time to like become great at it, but I could do something for a few months. Little did I know, it like completely snowballed within a year. I mean, it's like going from like not knowing how to swim to winning the Olympics and swimming the next year. You know, like it was completely like thrown in the deep end, like immersion, but. I absolutely fell in love with it and every single person there. And like, you know, I I feel like I I really found like a whole lot of like lifelong friends that I didn't even know were, were coming, you know? And um, it was something that I thought was gonna be a small detour and it just became my whole life for a year. And they say that no one really retires. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm just, you know, trying to do the baby thing right now. I'm yeah. playing it by ear, but. I, I do miss a lot of, like, little things about it. Me and the girls would have, like, little rituals and little things that you would do, like, like small comforts throughout the day, you know? Like, there were, like, little ways everyone would say, like, good luck or good job. Little, little things right. like that. But, yeah, it's it's fun watching. I, I miss them, but I'm also happy to be resting. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I need some rest. Healing up. I'm healing up. I, um, I pulled two pieces of glass out of my leg uh, the other day. <laughs> From what? On the lead up to WrestleMania, we had that backstage where we all oh, were getting arrested. Yes. And I was kicking out the thing. So they were like, okay, you like kick out the window, but don't like kick out the window too hard because we're gonna bring in the gimmick, like the, the the glass window, like the sugar glass window. I'm like, okay, cool. So I kicked the window. Well, I guess I uh I dented the frame. So then they're like, we can't put in the sugar glass. And I was like, I'll break the real fucking window. <laughs> and they're like, you don't have to break the window. I was like, I wanna break this window. And then uh, <laughs> so I kick out the window and I'm like, yeah, I kicked out the window. And I tried kicking out the frame and then my heel slipped and the glass went whoop, up the back of my leg and I like pulled it in. <laughs> That's when you hear me come like, don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> and I was just like, ah. And I'm like kicking the shit out of the thing. <laughs> and so I was like sitting at home and like pulling glass out and like throwing it with my other hand and like a cast and stuff, you know? And I was just like, wrestling's fake. <laughs> Dang. I'm like stressed out by that wrestling story. Is so fake. But the reason why we can like keep going while I'm like, by the end of the year, I'm like dragging myself, you know, to the finish line. But you know, it's because we script everything that we can work around all these kind of things that in a fight would be the end of the world. Right. And so it's like, Stuff like this, I'm not, like, that bummed about it because you can kind of, like, work around everything. So it's, like, it makes everything a lot less stressful in a way, but it also makes, forces me to endure more because yeah. I'm like, oh, it's not that serious of a situation. I could do WrestleMania 14 stitches in my leg. It's fine. Like, I'll take them out after. What is it? What were, like, the biggest <laughs> challenges, maybe, going from something that's not predetermined to something that is predetermined? I mean, still incredibly, if not more physical, getting glass in your leg. Um, it's, it's physical in a different way. Like, fighting is definitely... The stress from fighting is much, much more, you know? It's like, I could get in a random fight. Someone could walk into this room right now and I'll beat the fuck out of anyone in this planet, you know? But it's the, the training camp and the weeks leading up to it and the press and just, like, going to sleep every night thinking about it and all those things. Like, that's, like, the real wear and tear, I feel like. Not the, the physical part of it so much. And, of course, like, you know, fights, you, you, you just assume, okay, I'm going to give myself at least a month to recover after that. Mm -hmm. So it's like... It's a peaking system. You allow yourself to peak and crash. With WWE, it's just a grind and it's nonstop. And I did like the easy version. Like everyone else does like 300 days a year. Their bodies don't get to rest as much as ours in MMA, but their minds get to rest a lot more than we do in MMA. I feel like there's just, there's no pressure on anything. The only thing that compares to the mental strain in MMA is the Olympics. Interesting. Yeah, that's the one highest because you train your whole life and you have one day for all of your training and all of your hard work to pay off. It was all for nothing. Right. You could get another fight in a couple months. So nothing compares to that. And so I think I went from like the highest stress possible to like less and less. And then, yeah, I'm older now. I don't want to stress out about anything anymore. Um, WrestleMania. Yes. When you first started um, your year with the organization, was that on the radar? When I first came to the organization, like, I was like, hey, I'd really like to do this for a couple months. We're gonna have a baby soon. So you know this isn't forever. 
Um, but my one request is like when we first start, I want to finish my storyline with Stephanie. And so that was that was my like, request because I love Stephanie McMahon so much, which is so funny because we're supposed to hate each other. Right, guys. Yeah, exactly. I love her. I'm like, oh really? my god, I love her so much. <laughs> oh god, it's so great to get that out. <laughs> okay. All right. Shout I love Stephanie. all of the girls so much. Oh my god, and it's like this big secret, and I had to like keep it in so people could enjoy themselves. But I love them. It was just an incredible experience. Like Triple H like taught me how to lace up my boots. Like he literally w- was like, "Oh no, you want to do this for, like from the outside in?" So that way, that like I'm like Triple H is showing me how to lace up my yeah. boots. Like, how can I not succeed in this situation when I have all of the best people in this business all set in place to help me succeed? I would be ashamed of myself if I couldn't exceed in every expectation. People didn't like it all the time, but it was fun for me. <laughs> and you made more history. And I mean, women headlining WrestleMania. Yeah, it was great, huh? That was fun. It was really great. It and, was like, so great. Did it feel huge to you? Uh, yeah, it, it felt big. It's just, I think it just has to do with the time and the perspective. Like, me and Liz Carmouche felt bigger to me. This is a gigantic cultural moment. This is not just a moment for Ronda Rousey. This is a, a moment for women's sports, period. She's Ronda looking for it. She got it. Wow. First round armbar finish for the champion, Ronda Rousey. Even though it was years ago when not as many people watched and it was in the Honda Center, which maybe holds maybe like 16 to 20,000 compared to WrestleMania, where it was in front of like 80,000 people and you know millions of people watching. I just felt like me and Carmouche was the most like pivotal moment or that everything had to happen that way or else women's MMA would it have ended before it started, you know? And um, with WrestleMania, it just felt like all the stars were aligned and the whole universe was conspiring for us to succeed. And I had not a single doubt in my mind that we would. But for, like, Carmouche, it was so many outside factors of, like, the numbers had to do well. And I had to win the match, but I had to win the match in, like, an exciting way. And, like, there were just so many other different factors that I had to worry about. And I feel like the, the stakes were, like, higher in a way, even though the venue and the audience was smaller. Were you nervous your first wrestling gig? Yeah, nervous, but, I mean, after fighting, it's like, I feel like I get to enjoy wrestling so much more than everybody else because I've just maxed out on, like, pressure. The kind of moments, like, this past WrestleMania, that main event, that moment was, like, the most high-pressure, high-stakes, fucking crazy moment that Charlotte and Becky have ever been in in their lives. And I was just like, I love WrestleMania, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, we're gonna have a great day, and like, we have a great match, and nice to see you guys, you know? First ever women's night at WrestleMania, woo! So they're all like, oh my God, I wanna do a good job, and I'm like, Joan Jett's here, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. And she's so cool. Oh my God, I cannot believe, like, you know, like, have like moments to yourself, like, I don't even know if this is real life right now. I'm like standing on top of the ramp at WrestleMania, and Joan Jett's like playing their guitar, and she looks at me, and she's like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, God, like, how can you not be, like, totally kicked out? No wonder I broke my hand. Joan Jett just nodded at me, okay? She was you playing see that? bad <laughs> reputation, looked at me, <laughs> nodded in my direction, like, go get that shit, Rhonda. And I'm like, I'm going to go hit somebody so hard and break my hand. Because <laughs> I love Joan Jett. That is it's a WrestleMania. Yes. I mean, they pulled out all the stuff. You, you know, if there's any time to go big and go home, it's WrestleMania. For so. real. And now you're spending time at home. Yes, after uh, WrestleMania. It's so great. I love it. I know, he's so soft. <laughs> You're like the softest goat ever. Like, the only thing, like, success and money really gets you is you get to choose how you spend your time and who you spend it with. And that's really it. And so... There's certain times where, like, yeah, I want to get up and, like, change the world and, like, charge it and, like, handle things. And I'll be on that mode for, like, a year straight. You'll see me. But um, there's also times where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to roll out of bed. And I want to play Pokemon, roll out of bed, and eat fruit snacks because I'm a fucking adult. And I've worked my ass off. And I want to play Pokemon and eat fruit snacks at 8 a.m. because I'm on And sometimes that's really empowering for me that I yeah. can just do that. And... 
So I think like the cool thing is like I get to play things by year and I have so many opportunities of like different things, whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it. I've known you a long time. You started sharing publicly that being a mother is next on your list. What has the reaction been like for you guys? Every single person that I talk to, usually any friend that I catch up with is like, so when are you going to have a baby? So yeah, it's baby yeah. time. We're like, we're going to see some little Rhonda and Travis's. And it's just such like a hopeful time, you know, and positive and optimistic of like, I want to like bring a person into yeah. this world. I think I'm going to take like my first test tomorrow or the day after. How would you like surprise somebody and be like, we're going to have a baby? Because I, I can't keep secrets. If he walks in the front door, <laughs> I'd be like this. <laughs> <laughs> The phone I know. He's walking the front door. I'm like, hi, babe. <laughs> There's like something upstairs for you right now, but it's like nothing to do with the baby. Like, <laughs> I, I will break immediately. So I don't know. I gotta figure this out. And uh, seeing you and Travis, like, as soon as you guys were together, I was like, oh yeah, no, they're supposed to be together. We were in like, the same gym for like a year and a half, and then one day I was like, oh my god, I, you're, I, I've known you like nineteen thousand lifetimes before now. How did I not? Nice to see you again. Sorry, I didn't recognize you till now. Like, oh it really kind of felt like that, yeah. What's life at Browsy Acres like on, like, a day-to-day -day for you guys? Trav wakes up, like, balls early, and then he, like, works out and starts taking care of the animals, and then, like, I'll wake up and, like, start making breakfast. I want to get to the point where I'm waking up and working out with him, but, you know, I'm still, like, in that recoup stage. Yeah. Um, I've been sleeping, like, 12 hours a night, I think, since WrestleMania. Needed. So I'm like recharging right now. But eventually I'll be waking up at 5 a.m. with him. We'll both work out. And then while he's doing the animals, make the boys breakfast, and then we drop them off to school. And then we come back, and we have like projects. I got so geeked out about this the other day. I made like flower towers. And oh, I saw. Yeah, so I make tin cans and then I drill holes in tin cans and then like put wires through them. And then like I like put some succulents in it. And I was like, fucking succulents, man. <laughs> I got a tower of flowers and it's like a curtain of privacy. I planted a whole bunch of squash and some zucchini and I planted some tomatoes and I planted some rhubarb and I planted like a whole bunch of sunflowers and I planted some bell peppers and stuff. I just fucking love plants. Different things every day. And I'll randomly be like bees and then I'll suddenly like get a whole bunch of shit for bees and then next day I'll be like, oh, Bokashi composting. I need to learn how to do fermentation and composting. Oh. And these are all things that I have like got into a thing about it, and there's shit for it all over the house, but I haven't actually assembled it yet. So we have everything for a, a bee, beekeeping, mm. everything for Bukashi composting, and I just haven't put the shit together, and there's like a lot of different like things that I'll come into my mind. I'm like, oh my God, I need to make a sock monkey. And then like suddenly there will be like all the shit for a sock monkey around, and then I can never do it. <laughs> so yeah, we do projects. I wanna talk <laughs> about some of the projects you have going on. Most recently, Mortal Kombat. Right. You're voicing Sonya Blade? Yep. That's amazing. Sonya Blade! Are you yeah. excited? Oh, God, I'm so excited. I mean, I really wanted to be Sonya Blade when I grew up. Like, remember, like, when you're, you have brothers and sisters, oh, right? Yeah. When, like, anything came on, any movie, you're like, I call so-and-so, I call this one, I call that one. Yes. So Mortal Kombat, I was like, I call Sonya Blade. And I was like, I call Katana. And they're like, I call so-and-so. So I was Sonya Blade, and, like, I really wanted to grow up to be Sonya Blade so badly. And then I actually got to be Sonya Blade, which was like, I I, might, I think I was in the car when I heard the news, and thankfully no one died. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you always used to reference even Mortal Kombat. Like, I remember yes. that being something that you had a passion for. Hell yeah, man. Oh, fatality. They put one of my arm bars in the game for Sonya Blade. Jeez. That is so cool. I mean, she was the first female character in the game, right? She was the first female character in the game who was actually kind of thrown in as like an afterthought for like, oh, we just need a female character. And so then they created like a whole backstory for her and then she became one of the driving characters of the whole franchise and of Mortal Kombat 11. She is real pivotal character in the story mode. You gotta check it out. So you have that. And then I heard you're executive producing a show? Yes. Uh, Strong Girl is a uh, number one, like I think Korean format um, out there right now. And we just got picked up to like redo it for uh, American audiences. It's a story about like, you know, women being empowered and everything like that, but it's pretty much this girl's the strongest girl on earth and there's no explanation for it. How did you get involved in becoming an executive producer for that? I mean, that's massive. Started my, uh, my uh, production company up, No DMB Productions. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and, uh, love it. Yeah, we um, started with Why We Fight, which got nominated for a sports semi. Yes. And we also were part of Shark Week this past year. And now we have Strong Girl coming in. And I found that 
through the years, my communication with my fan base was always through a middleman of the media. And so I wanted to kind of create a safe venue for myself to be able to invite people in and share my life. I pretty much opened RondaRousey.com to be like a living documentary for me of everything that's going on. Trying to build like an online like archive and university, more just to kind of uh, record all of my knowledge because this is the first like generation where you know like judo and all my arm bars and everything like that has all been passed down word of mouth with generation and generation and so That's like crazy. yeah now that I'm like not competing or anything like that anymore I can actually like put all this stuff out there and not like worry or anything like that it's it's easier to share I feel like if if the outlet is my outlet and I'm sharing from home you know, and so I'm just looking forward to the next part of my life and actually letting everyone else be a part of it. I can't wait. I think this is all so exciting. Being able to catch up with you, it, it, this is incredible. I feel like you always have so much to share and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being so open. And for those people who just want to support you in every aspect of life, do you have anything that you want to tell them or share with them? One thing that my husband taught me, he taught me that I'm so much more than just a fighter and I'm so much more than just a wrestler. I am so much more than any of the things that I can do or I'm so much more than the things that I'm talented at. And I would just say, look forward to the future of seeing a lot of different things. Things. I just feel like so like free and not pigeonholed into one thing or another and I just appreciate like everybody like following me and like being part of it and yeah I'm excited for what's next.